Hello, sports fans. Larry Allen here at the KGAS studios and alongside Scott Surratt, the head football coach and athletic director at Carthage High School. Well, the Bulldogs tonight are at Buckeye Stadium. Actually, no, it's Jeff Trailer Stadium in Gilmer. Tough place to get a win for visitors usually as they go up against the Gilmer Buckeyes. But last Friday night, the first meeting in 37 years against the Marshall Mavericks for Carthage, and that took place at Maverick Stadium. Okay, a couple of interesting stats, Scott. First half, Marshall won that one 24-21. We won the second half 14-8. Uh, therefore, we won the ball game 35-32. And Coach Darren Preston, he's the best at making halftime adjustments. In the first half, I had Marshall with 238 yards rushing. Uh, just about all of that from their great quarterback, junior quarterback, J.J. Green and Traylon Lewis, the tailback. 238 in the first half, 58 in the second half. So we pretty much shut them down in that second half. And the top three receivers, all D1, they were averaging 224 yards of receptions in the first two games, 224, and they got 142 against us. Okay, what would you see on the tape? Well, I, you know, phenomenal – Adjustments by Coach Preston and his staff, uh, Mike Morin, Ryan Marion, uh, Coach Gaston, Greg Gaston, Charlie Tucker, and John Goodwin did a phenomenal job breaking down what they tried to do to us in a, at half. And, uh, you know, Coach Preston, uh, he's got a lot of patience. you got to have a lot of patience being a defensive coordinator, especially when you got three defensive linemen down, um, mm -hmm. you know, with injuries. And, you know, it, when Lister went down, we were we had three, three of our starters down. And um, – but – Thank, thankfully, they will all be back and ready to go, and uh, may, maybe tonight. And uh, so um, it was, um, you know, phenomenal adjustments, but you got to give their kids, uh, our defensive players, the credit also. They played a lot better the second half, and uh, I thought, you know, maybe we were in better shape or, or adjustments, whatever it happened, but uh, we played well the second half. Uh, specifically, <clears throat> what did you do in defending – Green, because in the first half there were some plays where he just had all kinds of time to throw the ball. He didn't have that in the second half. Well, we we went into the game plan it was just with three down because we didn't have enough, um, you know, linemen, uh, de defensive linemen, healthy to. So we knew they were going to get some rushing yards, uh, but. We, we wanted to be patient, and he was very patient with that. And uh, and then the second half, we, we started bringing a little bit more at him. and not, We still stayed with three linemen, but we started bringing us a few linebackers and showing him a few different looks. And mm -hmm. uh, and I think it confused him a time or two, and he threw, threw the interception to um, – Austin Morgan there, and mm -hmm. um, so it, it was. Uh, it was it, like I said, it was a great adjustment. The kids executed it and played very well. Austin Morgan, sophomore. His brother was a sophomore and started back in there. Second, he did. Year, didn't he? You know, Anthony started as a sophomore um, at safety for us in in '08 on the championship team. So um, it was a pretty pretty good bloodline. Absolutely. All right, Coach, talk to us about uh, Gunner Caps. I don't have the stats in front of me. I intended to get this percentage, but he had a really high percentage for the ball game and threaded some passes in there in tight situations. I thought he had, I thought he had a great game throwing. He did. He threw, threw the ball very well, and, um, you know, we wasn't – wide open all the time but mm -hmm. that's what uh, really good quarterbacks do is um, you don't have to be wide open you can be you know a foot open and still we always make a statement great balls uh, great accuracy ball we call it great balls but what i'm talking about if you thought with great accuracy beats great defense and um, you know i think that's what he did a lot the other night i thought we receivers made some you know really good catches in traffic uh, especially uh, Kelvante dixon and mm -hmm. then of course tucker smith had the big play uh, and on our current corner of the end zone and uh, mm -hmm. on a great ball. And so and we threw the ball very well. We was a little disappointed in the rushing yards, but at the same time they had nine in the box a lot or eight in the box, depends on what our formation was. And they were they were daring us to throw. And honestly, we would have thrown it a lot. We were throwing it deeper. We would have thrown it more deep <laughs> uh, a lot. We would have thrown a lot more deep balls, we'll put it that way. But – the way they were running around and our defense was gassed a little bit, we didn't want to score quickly mm -hmm. and uh, um, because the defense would have went right back out there. And then, 
you know, it's all it's all part of the plan. We've got to get stops and get adjustments and stuff. But if uh, the adjustment's not as very near as good, if you're you're gassed and really tired, so uh, we didn't want to take too many deep shots at that point. And we had to limit our, our deep shots and, and things to keep their their explosive offense off the field some, too. And, uh, and thank goodness it worked. And, uh, you know, the only disappointing thing in the game is we didn't put them away like we should have. We had, it was 35-24 in defense. We got some mm -hmm. stops. And then we got it moved down there. And, um, you know, we just missed a few things on the goal line that were wide open. And, um, and, and then we kind of dropped the ball. He called it one touchdown, one – I believe one uh, official called it a touchdown. I know our players called it a touchdown, and then the uh, official on our sideline said no. It was it came out it was incomplete. So it was really close on the tape, and whether he scored or not. And um, Coach Mack says he did. Of course, he's a receivers coach. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the offensive coordinator, receivers coach, he said he scored. But anyway, uh, I think if we'd have got that. Touchdown! One of those two possessions. I, I think you know. I think we'd even opened it up more. Uh, we just left them in it and keep. And uh, they they kept those guys alive and some. They had some hope. And when we did that, and it it got uh, close. You know. And and, and uh, what I was proud of though is we need those situations, mm -hmm. especially in preseason where we're close. We got to run the clock out. We call it four-minute offense, and then we had to have a first down after they tried the onside kick, and and uh, we got the first down pretty easy, and, um, and then the clock, we ran the clock out. All right, tonight it's the Gilmer Buckeyes in Gilmer. Uh, so I remember some great games up there. The one I remember in particular was about 11 or 12, 13, somewhere in that neighborhood, and 39-36, Gilmer won that one. Uh, so tell us about the Buckeyes uh, for 2018. Uh, they're playing a lot of new players. Uh, they they like us. We've got a lot of new starters, and they've got a lot of new starters. And, um, you know, they they went to Paris the other night, um, and they did get beat. I don't know. They I saw where they didn't feel like they played very well, and um, and, I, and I agree with that. And so um, I think we're going to see a lot better effort out of them, and I think they'll play a very good football game at, at their home. They haven't lost – I think they've lost two in ten years now. I think we gave them their first loss in like ten years um, last year at uh, Jeff Trader Stadium now. It's going to call it Buckeye Stadium too. And then, and then I think Pleasant Grove beat them there last year. But other than that, they still – I think two two losses in 10 years is a pretty good run at home. So, we, mm. we expect their best. We know they have a big crowd, loud crowd. And, uh, you know, we, we expect their best. And it's going to take our best to, to get over and get a win. They've been rotating their quarterbacks. Tell us about those two young men. Yeah, they have – I believe it was, one of them's a senior and then they have the sophomore. And the sophomore has actually thrown in quite a bit more here lately. So I don't know if they're going to settle on him or um, you know I don't know I don't know if they're going to keep rotating but we're they're, they're kind of the same type of player neither one of them's a uh, you know a runner they're both throwers so you prepare for them the same way not saying they can't run but they I don't think they're going to do like a lot of zone read and and you know change their whole offense and like you know they did like Luke Turner when they had him and mm -hmm. um, so I think they're the same type of player so we can have the same type of defensive plan they're not quite a JJ Green are they well they throw the ball very well uh, they really do uh, they're, I, they're not going to run around like JJ Green I, mm -hmm. no I don't I hope not I'd hope not, I, you know. Uh, or one plan was, and I said, well, if he keeps running around like this, he's going to uh, he's gonna start cramping, and um, which it didn't happen. And But it was the way we scored back and forth, I was the one that was, said, we're going back. We were scoring, they were scoring. I said, I'm the one that's to start cramping. <laughs> but uh, he's a great athlete, and uh, J.J. was. But, no, I don't, I don't expect those guys to, to run the ball around like that, no. All right. Now, if you look on uh, if you look on the the, the websites, uh, particularly Smokey.com, you see some folks saying Brandon Webb may not play, and he's one of their top r rushers, I believe. Right? Uh, yeah, I think his name's Brand, uh, okay. but it may be they may just call him that, but uh, in short for Brandon. But I think his actual name's Brand Webb. But uh, I don't know. You know, he's a good athlete. Uh, he played against us last year, played, ran the ball a little bit against us last year, played corner. We had him graded out as their best corner last year. And he, he does play corner, especially when a team gets in a red zone this year. And um, 
he played quite a bit against Van when they got in the red zone, and he's still, I believe, their best corner. Uh, so uh, we don't know. He may be out, and um, if he is, I hope he gets well in one week. Okay, tell us about their uh, offensive formation. They like to use. Uh, do, do they? Uh, do they go? Do they go? Hurry up at any at all? Yeah, they like to. They like to pace you. They like to really snap the ball quickly, and uh, they, they'll they'll do some twenty personnel. What I mean by that is uh, two backs and or, or H back. We we'll call him, and it's not a true tight end, but and then three receivers, and then they'll go four receivers, and then they'll do some empty. Um, you know, so they, they'll do some formations and, and things, and but it's it's the same that we've seen from them the last few years, and I'm sure they're saying we're the same uh, formations and things, and they've seen from us. How much have they changed since Trailer left? Not a whole lot. Not offensively. They they're still running the same plays because you know Matt was the head coach was one of the offense coordinators, and uh, so they're still trying to run exactly the same plays and. And, um, you know, they've, they've done, been very successful. I know they hadn't won one, but they've been in the semis several times and things. So, um, great program. Two elite programs going at it. And, you know, and I, I told her players the other day, the, day, you know, I, the other day, I, uh, my family, not my mother, me and my mother, we're, we can't draw a, a stick horse, but my, my brothers and my dad, they can draw and paint unbelievably. And they've actually sold some – um, portraits and things, and but uh, you know, and I can't draw a lick, but I was acting like I could, so I drew a helmet on there and and then put a G, and I said that's all it takes to get me going, seeing that G right there, and then I showed it to everybody, and uh, they were laughing at my drawing because it it, <laughs> it was absolutely brutal, but it it was uh, it was kind of a funny story, but yeah, I, if it takes more than that G to get G to get our players or the coaches going or our fans, uh -huh. then. Uh, we're overlooking something, and we're not overlooking anybody. Everybody's I, – I understand it. Everybody – Gilmer's trying to play the poor old me. Well, they're two and one, and uh, we're not buying into all that. We're not – it's – you know, it, I don't think you can put Gilmer on the other side and it would be a trap game because there, there has been trap games that we should win and it says, hey, like Chapel Hill a few years ago, we won 30-something straight, and we knew how good they were. I said, trap game. And then they end up get beaten in the in the finals and win it the next year with the same athlete. So uh, we're not going for all the, you know, well, poor poor me Gilmer. We're down and stuff. We know we got to play really well to get a win, and um, that's what we're challenged our kids this week. Okay, I want to ask you about one of our grads each week, and I think I had you contact uh, or comment on uh, Keontae Ingram uh, last week. How about Jared McLean this week? Jerry's playing well. He's uh, you know, starting UTSA, and uh, he was actually voted their most valuable player, defensive player last year, and uh, by the coaching staff. and And that's hard to do when you got a first round guy right uh, on the other side at defensive end because he plays defensive end like he did for us. The other defensive mm -hmm. end this year was a first round pick in the NFL. I think a fourteenth uh, player picked in in the draft, and they chose him as the most valuable defensive player so that that means a lot that means he's doing a lot of a lot of good things and uh doing it the right way and um so it must be a to do that to anytime you're going to be the most valuable defensive player not only do you have to play great but you got to be a great leader and so he must be doing everything right and um, you know he came up saw him a lot this summer was working out a little bit and when he wasn't fishing and uh, when his coach came this spring, he was talking about, I've never seen anybody or coached anybody that, that loves fishing as much as this guy does. Huh. <laughs> he said, we got to get him to uh, love watching film as much as he does <laughs> love fishing. And, and, but no, he said, he said he's doing great and they're excited about him. Now, I watched a little bit of the uh, UTSA game this past Saturday on TV, and you can tell he's obviously gained some pounds. How many? Oh, he's up around 250, 255, and, um, you know, he's moving well. I actually watched him against, um, who was it, Arizona State, uh -huh. and uh, moved very well. And, uh, you know, I didn't think it was him at first, and then uh, because I said that's not his name on but it's Carter McLean yeah. on the back. And I, I didn't know that. Yeah, and, you know, his so that kind of got me, and I said, well, it's not him. That's, that name's too long. And then I kept finally got a close enough shot. It was Carter McLean, and uh, so, yeah, he's – He's, uh, I think his mom's a Carter. And, uh, I see. You know, okay. Yeah. Uh, 
All right, uh, volleyball started off district play. I think they uh, won it in three straight, didn't we they? We did. We beat Jasper and played very well. Um, over in Jasper, we beat them three games, and then we're uh, our record's twenty two and six. So we're having a really good season, and we play Gilmer today at four thirty. I believe it's four thirty. I'm almost positive of that. And um, so uh, Gilmer's got a good team, and uh, we played them. You know, in, in uh, I believe in. The, Championship. It was either in the yeah we played them in the championship at the ETBU tournament, and mm -hmm. we played very very well against them that night, and and probably the best we played all year. And so hopefully we can uh, repeat that performance and get a big win in Gilmer today. And that'll be in Gilmer, right? That's in Gilmer. Just before so, the football game. Before the football game. All right. And I uh, want to confirm this. Okay, no chalk talk this past Monday. Do, do we pick back up this Monday? Yes, sir. We'll be we'll be there at uh, high noon, 12 o'clock this Monday. Okay, and this is the last week. I want to apologize. I gave the wrong date. <laughs> I should never try anything on dates without having a calendar in front of me. But for sure, it's this coming Monday, which is the 24th. It will pick back up at high noon at the field house. All right, Coach, any last comments? No, it's going to be exciting. You know, Gilmer Carthage – should be enough said for the fans and everybody involved. So it's going to be fun. Okay. One, I will ask you one final thing. You ever hear from Jeff Trailer? Yeah, we, Jeff and I talk a lot. We at least try to talk once a month. I hadn't talked to him since, uh, you know, the North Texas deal. I didn't think that's <laughs> the appropriate time to call. He told me that, you know, this whole summer and the last spring that they weren't – were. They wasn't very good. Hopefully, they can win five or six games. And um, but he, you know, when you're they're going in there and trying to run all the spread and hurry up stuff, and then mm. and uh, Coach Belima before him, I think I said that right. The mm -hmm. Coach before him was all about the big kids mm -hmm. and your pro style and slow, run the clock and that. So it's complete different. So it's they don't have a lot of receivers in and th there because they only usually use two. On the other ones, they were, you know, blocking more and more than catching, and uh -huh. so it's a whole different scheme, and and um, so. But he knows there's not a whole lot of patience, <laughs> you know, I mean, especially at the college level, any level really, but especially at the pro level, college level, they don't care what you know. Uh -huh. They don't care about all that. You better, you better win. So they're a little nervous right now. I, I promise you. All right. Okay. And I just thought of one more thing. Okay, you mentioned the pro level, Patrick Mahomes. We played the guy, didn't we? We did. He's phenomenal, and um, we knew he was phenomenal. Uh, we knew we had to keep out scoring him that night, and I made you know humongous coaching mistake is um, you know we were playing T. Gorey, T. Gorey also at safety to try to slow their passing down, and they were snapping it fast. We were so good, we were snapping it fast, uh -huh. and uh, we actually it's the only time we've really treated a preseason game other than last year against Gilmer because we thought we were really good last year and we knew we were really good in 13 and said, uh -huh. we're going to blow this up like a Super Bowl and see how good we are. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, both times. And we walked off the field and knew how good we were because we knew how good White House was. And, you know, we had them down 39 to uh, 21 and had the ball. And T. Gorey all, uh, all – Sudden was running about a five two forty because he was gassed and mm -hmm. and he was over there by us in the fourth quarter. Our best players over there, our best receiver and everything, and it's over there by us. And we quit scoring. Is what exactly uh -huh. what happened. And um, we knew we had to score because they got beat that year seventy two to sixty nine in the fourth round in five A, and or actually it was four A then, but five A uh -huh. now saying, and and it wasn't overtime. So that's how good he is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we knew we had to keep scoring, and uh, uh, we ran out of gas, and uh, we knew we had some things. Well, T didn't play any more defense that year except on third down. And if we'd had the same plan, I really believe that we'd have kept scoring and, and won that game. But mm. Mahomes put his show on that night, and you know what? And we knew. He said, that guy's something. He said, <laughs> he's a great player, and he did in college, and now he's doing the pros. Yeah. So. Okay. So. All right, those are the comments of head coach Scott Surratt. As Scott said, boy, I hope you can join us in Gilmer. Always, you, you will not find a better high school atmosphere than Buckeye or Jeff Trader Stadium with the Bulldogs coming in as the opponent. So it'll be a 7.30 kickoff. If you cannot be there, we'll be on the air at 7 o'clock with a look at the starting lineups. For Coach Surratt, I'm Larry Allen. Have a great weekend, everyone.